How Robin Hood Met Little John Oh, here is my hand, the stranger replied. I'll serve you with all my whole heart. My name is John Little, a man of good metal. Ne'er doubt me, for I'll play my part. His name shall be altered, quoth William Stutley, and I will his godfather be. Prepare then a feast, and none of the least, for we will be merry, quoth he. All that summer, Robin Hood and his merry men roamed in Sherwood Forest, and the fame of their deeds spread across the land. The sheriff of Nottingham raged over the band of outlaws, but all his traps failed to catch them. The poor people feared them at first, but when they found that the men meant them no harm, and instead took from the rich and gave to the poor, they began to like them very much. The band grew larger, and by the end of the summer eighty men had sworn loyalty. But during the quiet days Robin became impatient for adventure. One morning he slung his quiver over his shoulder and set out in the direction of Nottingham. Before he left, he warned his men to stay along the borders of the forest with an earshot of his horn. Robin boldly walked along the highway in the direction of Nottingham, but at a bend in the road he turned onto a short cut across the stream. As he approached the stream, he saw that it had become swollen by we recent rains into quite a torrent. The log footbridge was still there, but as he started across it, he saw a very tall stranger coming from the other side. Robin quickened his pace, and the stranger did, li did likewise, each hoping to cross first. They met midway, and neither would yield an inch. "'Give way, fellow!' roared Robin. The stranger smiled. He was almost a head taller than Robin. "'Nay,' he retorted, "'I give way only to a better man than myself.' "'Give way, I say,' repeated Robin, "'or I shall have to show you a better man.' His opponent did not budge, but laughed loudly. "'Now!' he said good-naturedly i will not move after hearing that speech even if i might have before for i have sought this better man my whole life show him to me i will said robin stay here while i cut a cudgel like that you have been twiddling in your fingers he leapt to his own bank of the stream laid aside his long bow and arrows and cut a stout staff of oak six feet in length still it was a full foot shorter than his opponent's then he boldly returned to the bridge I do not mind telling you that a bout with archery would have been easier for me, but there are other tunes in England besides those an arrow sings. Here Robin whirred the staff above his head, so make you ready for the tune I'm about to play upon your ribs. One, two, three, roared the giant, striking at him instantly. Luckily Robin moved quickly and nimbly, because the blows that grazed his shoulder would have felled an ox. While swerving to avoid the stroke, Robin was getting ready for his own and back he came with a whack whack parried the other whack 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 the fight was fast and furious it was strength pitted against skill the mighty blows of the stranger went whistling around robin's ducking head while his own swift undercuts were enough to give the other an attack of indigestion yet each held his place not moving backward or forward a foot for a good half hour the giant's face was getting red and his breath came snorting like a bull's he stepped forward with a furious onslaught, but Robin dodged his blows, then sprang in swiftly and unexpectedly, and dealt the stranger a wicked blow upon the ribs. The stranger reeled and nearly fell, but regained his footing. He returned the blow while he was still staggering. That blow was a lucky one. It caught Robin off guard. Since he had expected the stranger to fall, Robin fell into the stream. The cool, rushing current quickly brought him to his senses, but he was still so dazed that he groped by blindly for the swaying reeds to pull himself up on the bank. His assailant laughed at Robin, but was quick to help him. He thrust down his long stick to Robin, crying, Lay hold of that! Robin grabbed the stick and was hauled to dry land like a fish. He lay upon the warm bank for a while to rest, then sat up and rubbed his head. Then he seized his horn and blew three shrill notes that echoed against the trees. After a moment, leaves rustled and twigs crackled. Then two dozen of his men burst from the glade. "'Good master!' cried Will Stutley. "'How is this? There's not a dry thread on your body!' When Robin explained what had happened, Will wanted to give the stranger a beating. "'Nay, let him go free,' said Robin. "'The fight was a fair one. Are you ready to quit?' he continued, turning to the stranger with a twinkling eye. "'I am content,' said the other, "'for I like you well and wish to know your name.' My men, and even the Sheriff of Nottingham, know me as Robin Hood, the outlaw. Then I am right sorry that I beat you, exclaimed the man, for I was on my way to join your merry company. 
But now that I've used my staff on you, I fear that you will not have me. Nay, cried Robin, I'm glad you fell in with me, though I did all the falling. <laughs> the two men laughed and shook hands, and a strong friendship was begun. But you have not yet told us your name, said Robin. Where I come from, men call me John Little. Enter our company then, John Little. All we ask is your whole mind and body and heart, even unto death. I give the bond upon my life, said the tall man. Will Stutley, who loved a good jest, spoke up and said, The infant in our household must be christened, and I'll be the godfather. The stranger is so small of bone and sinew that his old name does not suit him. Here he paused long enough to fill a horn in the stream. He stood on tiptoe to splash the water on the giant and said, I christen you Little John. At this the men laughed long and loud. A bow and a full sheath of arrows for Little John, said Robin joyfully. Can you shoot as well as fence with the staff, my friend? I have hit an ash twig at forty yards, said Little John. Chatting pleasantly, the men returned to the forest and to their hideout. They found the rest of the band, built a ruddy fire, and sat down to feast on meat and ale. Robin was very pleased with the day's adventure, even though he had lost the fight. For sore ribs and heads will heal, but it's not every day that one meets a man as strong and honest as Little John. <laughs>